Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I'm so proud to announce our guest for this evening, Mr. Brad Strickland. He's not only a great guy, he's one of my best friends, and I'm so happy to call him my brother. And he's gone from rags to riches to rags to riches. And so, (laughs) you know, he's just one of these guys that he never stops, and he's always got good advice. And he's always steered me in the right direction. And um, I'm just going to let him talk. How you doing, Mr. Brad? I'm doing really, really good, Mr. Kyle Yates. <laughs> boom, boom, pants. I, uh, I'm so proud of you taking the show to this level already. Oh, I, mean, I really am. It's, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm honored that you invite me. I know you've got some, uh, some big notoriety people on some of the other stuff you've done. So uh, to, be on your, to be on your screen is uh, quite a treat. Yeah, and you don't charge me as much money as they do. No, no taco and a nice, you know, a good sunset and a taco. That's the payment. That's what we agreed to. So, Well, everybody that's listening or watching this on YouTube, if you've never heard of it, there's this thing called Castle on Wheels. Now, let me tell you something about this. My experience was I, not only did I get to work on it, but I also got to be there when they unveiled it at a Comic-Con. And it was invented and and drawn up and everything by Mr. Brad here. And Brad, tell us a little bit about the castle before you well, get into a positive message. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. It's, um, you know, I'm one of these feast and famine kind of guys. I design stuff. And anytime uh, I start to lose money, my wife would say, go build something and sell it. So I've, I've been selling uh, blueprints on eBay for little sheds uh, for for years, like years 20 years so i had this idea for a new shed i wanted to look like a a cottage that had little curved roof and uh so i thought i'll build one of those put it on the street corner and sell it for a couple of grand normal routine for me whenever i needed extra funds so um as i was working on it i'd show pictures of my progress at the ladies at the office and this one lady fell in love with it and when it was finally done and stained and beautiful i had it on this trailer i was going to take it down to the corner where you do park and sell your cars she goes, oh, I'd love to have that at my daughter's uh, birthday party. She's like turning 11. And the way she said it made me go, well, I'll rent it to you. And she goes, oh, oh, okay. And she starts to go off. And she's like, oh, my gosh, um, we'll have a slumber party. We'll have popcorn. And she just goes off and in her mind painted this wonderful slumber party in the shed I built. And so I was like, would you like to see some of my other designs that are on eBay right now? And I've always built my own designs. So I start going through all my pictures on the phone and she co- we come across this castle and the lady passes out and, and I revive her and she's like, we are princess, everything is princess. I was like, would you <laughs> rather me build the castle instead of the cottage? Ah! And she gets the jelly happies, ah! you know, and I'm like, as an architect, you don't normally see the jelly happies. The jelly happies are totally different. So she's, <laughs> she's going nuts. So I was like, I'm getting into it at this point. I said, tell you what, if I'm going to build a castle, I'll pad the walls with purple crushed velvet. I'll uh, put TVs in it, air conditioning, DVDs, disco ball, the works. And from there, I've done 300 parties over the last five years in multiple castles now. And uh, it's that whole company has been a fun ride. It's the reason I've been on television several times. That castle, along with the other castles, uh, has been my introduction to unique thinking unique designs and uh, uh and you and i have definitely had some uh, good times in the castle so that that's funny yes. you bring that up it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's in the background of my life it has a new it has a new and uh we've had 70 requests for franchises and i just was never comfortable moving forward until now we have a new uh business approach that i'm super excited about but then again it's just a minor it's almost a hobby to me i love doing it uh i'm not going to stop so uh, 
more to come. My football stadium uh, is a fun one too. So we got lots of projects, all sorts of cool stuff. Oh yeah, that was that was a blast, especially when you got to show all that at the Comic Con and all the people we got to meet while we were there. There was famous people that couldn't wait to get up there and look at yeah. this castle. Well, this if you want crazy. to, you, you got to scroll down a few years. But in my Facebook, I still have Spider Man on the castle and Princess Leia on the castle and Stormtroopers. On, I still have all those pictures on my Facebook. That was a heck of a Comic Con, dude. That was oh. unbelievable. That was I mean, great. I mean, we got to meet uh, Isai Morales and, uh, gosh, I can't uh, remember all the I, I just remember Danny ones, Trejo because Danny Trejo has family in Houston, and I threw out the castle, hey, let me do a party for your kids, you know. Uh, oh, man. And I'm a, I'm a big Danny fan anyway. Yeah, that was, that, was, uh, that was awesome. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good time. Yeah, so that's not why you brought me on here, though, is it? No, because you have <laughs> – Let's say you've you started out with nothing and then you built up and then of course you know economy and everything else happens and you know you're back down and then I, well, that I'll didn't stop you. an excuse for me, but I'll tell you, it, was <laughs> it wasn't the economy. It was I was stupid. I mean, we're always looking for the excuse, but the reason I crashed and burned was I was stupid. Mm. I, I was. It was. It, I mean, you don't open fitness centers if you don't know what you're doing, and that's what I did. I, I crashed and burned hard on that. But but now I'm on top of the planet. I, I'm loving life. So. And plus, you've been on television with yeah. Little People and Craft Wars with Tori Spelling. Yes. Um, I was privileged enough to be part of a pilot that yeah. unfortunately didn't get picked up, but it was still fun. It was a good time. We got yeah, to that. build a six foot tall football helmet. Now, how many people yeah. can say that? Yeah, you practically <laughs> built the football by yourself. That you was. That was a lot of sculpturing, Mr. Artist Guy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I've shot a pilot for A&E, and, and there's more TV coming, uh, centered more around the houses I'm doing. But Oh, and that reminds me, um, the, the uh, Billion Dollar Buyer. That's, that's the big one, yeah. Yeah. That was, it, a, that, that was pivotal. That um, was, uh, Tillman Fertitta, and, right. and you actually got to win, and yeah. you, you got to, to redesign um, – not only is pizza place, but you got to design that uh, that French bistro. The pizzeria. No, yeah, pizzeria. Texas boys call it an ice cream shop, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're all fancy on TV. They call it a patisserie. Hey, yeah. hey, Tillman struggled with it too, to be quite honest. Patisserie is, is really what it is. It's a coffee, high-end coffee and ice cream. And um, that was that was what was featured on the show. But even off the show, we got to do some, uh, some you know, down this Kima Boardwalk. It's a theme park down here in Houston with the roller coasters and all that. We did a, a space-themed uh, arcade. Martin and I both. I mean, uh, shot. We, we've shot for 14 different different shows and pilots together. Martin and I have. So, um, but yeah, th that's been part of my journey. Um, yeah, good stuff too. And I'm glad I got you on that pilot shoot for well, that, It was fun. I mean, yeah. it's it's even got me the opportunity to try out for a couple of more shows coming up. That's so. right. I started encouraging you, yeah, because you have yes. the passion and uh, for the for the hunting down the ghost, and you should follow your passion. Yeah, well, you know, they could use me as a zombie, as ugly as I am. Well, that was a given. <laughs> Nobody was even going to bring that up, Kyle. He's a zombie boy. So, at least I think that. So tell us where your journey has taken you. I mean, where you started, and then how you've yeah. gotten to this point. Well, um, you know. I, I could tell you about the three drawings that changed my life. And, um, and, and one, one of them was when I was a second grader, I would come home on Thursdays and I start crying and I wouldn't stop crying. And I would cry clear into the late night. I wouldn't even fall asleep. I just fall asleep crying. And this really disturbed my mom. And what it was, was on Friday mornings was spelling tests. First thing on, 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 on Friday mornings, we had to spell the word cat. And I spelled the word cat perfectly. It's just not the way you do it or anybody else, but the way I spell it, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. But I still get to deal with the failure, the embarrassment, the bad grade, the teacher conferences. And this as a second grader was just too much for me. Uh, I have severe dyslexia. And so ultimately I was in the hospital, in the basement, in the psycho ward because of this problem. And um, as we're walking through the basement, I knew this was not a good thing. So when we walk into the doctor's office, uh, doctor was friendly enough. He's like, well, hello, Brad, Mrs. Strickland. Brad, why don't you have a seat over there? I'm going to talk to your mom for a few minutes, and then I'll have a chat with you. 
what he said was go sit on a kid sized couch with a kid sized coffee table with a kid sized everything. It was really, really cool. He says, just draw a picture. I'll be with you in a minute. I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to draw a picture. And I looked up. What am I going to draw? And there was a picture of a house in front of me. I said, that's what I'll do. I'll draw a house. So I took the pencil. I took the back of a magazine as a straight edge, and I drew an amazing house. I even did the chain link fence at a 45 degree angle, exactly spaced, both sides of the house. I put shadowing on the porch. I put texture on the roof. I did an extraordinary job because that's all I got. I can't read and write, but I can draw and I can you know, be creative. So five minutes later, they're done talking. They come over. The doctor looks at my drawing and just stares at it. I'm looking up at his eyes. I look at my mom. I look back at the doctor. And he says, Mrs. Strick, let's just wait on this. Two minutes later, we're out of there. I knew that drawing changed my life. I don't know exactly what would have happened, the treatments, the daily visits. I don't know. But I knew it changed my life. The second drawing that changed my life, I was 13 years old. And I knocked on the door. Hey, how's it going, Uncle Dan? He goes, hey, you're a freshman in high school. Yeah. Why don't you uh, see if your teacher will draw my next set of blueprints? I'm building, you know, building another house. I was like, okay, sure. I asked my teacher, and he said, sure, Laporte High School, Mr. Engel. And uh, so we spent about a month drawing the floor plan, electrical plan, roof elevations, interior elevations, details, everything. And uh, at the end of it, I ran two sets of blueprints with the ammonia paper, the stinky stuff, and I took them to my uncle. And I said, hey, Uncle Dan, here, here's your blueprints. And he started to reach for his wallet. And I'm like, I I'm going to get paid. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to get paid. He handed me $35. He says, jump on your Huffy bicycle, go down to City Hall and bring back, your, uh, bring back my building permit. Yeah, whatever, fine. So I go down there. I fill it all in. It's on Oakdale. It's three bedroom, two bath. I, I knew all the answers. So I ride my bicycle back with the permit. What I didn't realize was that drawing that I had just drawn set me apart from any other architect designer on the planet. I drew my own set of blueprints at 13, and the house is still standing. I had thought that all the other kids were doing the same thing for their uncles. I didn't realize it made me unique at that time. Mm -hmm. The third drawing that changed my life wasn't so much a drawing I drew, but a drawing that I saw. And um, I'd been unemployed for over two years. I'd been doing all sorts of uh, remodels and just not even making the, making the payments. In fact, I had to move back in with my uh, parents, with my wife, and three kids. Uh, ask any woman to move in with her mother-in-law for three years is a big, big ask. So when we get to the end of this, I, uh, I get to this opportunity with a major uh, commercial house, cookie cutter house company here in Houston. And uh, they make the offer. I say, yes, my first day is going to be on this day. But before you start, you got to go do these tests uh, just so we know how you fit in the team, psychological stuff. I was like, whatever. I've already got the offer. So I go downtown to Dr. Schmutz and Schmutz's uh, office, <laughs> and his name is on the building. He's got a parking garage. And I was like, oh, crap, this is a big deal. So I go inside. I was like, hi, I'm Brad. I, you know, uh, I need a job. I'm kind of humble at this moment because I've, I've, I've been on the rocks. It's been hard. Life's been tough. And they, oh, no problem. Come this way. Do your test. Well, okay, good. So as a dyslexic, I had developed tricks to pass high school. Um, for one, every time a test is put in front of me, I say to myself, it's a mantra, read every word, read every word backwards, read every answer, read every answer backwards, begin. And that's how I'll begin a test. It'll focus. I can find the answer inside the questions. I can find the questions inside the answers. Somehow I can keep getting through life according to the educational system. Right. I do this. And about 10 questions in, I get this question. Be ready for this. You're on your way to work, but you see a lady drop all her groceries. One, A, do you stop and render aid, or B, do you get to work on time? Uh, I, I, I get to work on time. So I'm going an hour later. Another question comes up. On your way to work, uh, you, you see a dog get injured. Do you stop and render aid, or do you get to work on time? Uh, I get to work on time. And I'm doing this for eight freaking hours. Well, you're on your way to work, and, you know, a kitten gets lost. Do you stop it? get to work on time. Man, it's messing up my head. And at the end of it, I realized they know I'm a murderer. I'm going to jail. I'm not getting the job. Life is crashing worse than when I walked in. So it's all over. I go up and I said, thank you very much. I've had a great day. Eight hours of it. Oh, there's two more tests. Oh, great. Why, why not stop now? My eyes are bleeding. Go ahead. She goes, okay, but these are time. They're only five minutes each. Oh, okay. A little relief. Puts me in a room, has a five minute digital clock, and she goes, here you go. Here's your answer sheet. Turn it over when you're ready. Hits the thing and walks out. I turn it over and I, okay, read every word. Read every word backwards. Read every question. Read every question backwards. Begin. 
It's got three triangles on the three triangles. There are three triangles on the paper. <laughs> I look at the answer sheet. There's 50 answers. One question. How many triangles are touching each other? Are you kidding? Well, these two. It's just two. Turn the page. How many? Oh, these three. Oh, seven. Hey, hey, 12. A boom. A bop. A ba this is easy. This is decompression from all that psycho babble they made me go through. This is actually a game to put me back into society, not being a murderer. I see what's going on here. So she comes in. Five minutes is done. I'm done. Here, take it. She goes, here's your last test, five minutes, and she walks out. I'm like, read every word, read it backwards, begin. I open it up. How many cubes are touching each other? Oh, well, those three cubes are touching each other. Oh, uh, those five cubes, a boom, a bomb. A bomb. And I get through it, I'm done. I go to the front, thank you very much. I got uh, uh, anything else that I need to do? No, no, that's it. But Dr. Smoots and Schmutz wants to meet with you. Oh, crap, I am a murderer. So she said, <laughs> go have a seat in the conference room. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I go in, I open the door. It literally looked like out of a Bugs Bunny cartoon, the conference room that has the infinity long conference table. So I go to the very last seat. I sit down. I'm nervous. As, I can't explain how nervous I was. He walks in. He doesn't even look at me. He's holding a manila folder. And he goes, second to the last test, fourth to the last question. You erased your answer, came back, and answered it. Was that because you wanted to beat the clock or you wanted to get the answer correct? And then it's the first time he looks at me. I said, sir, I just wanted to beat the clock, man. Just getting my work done on time has always been the best thing for me. Hmm. Well, you got the answer right. Uh, fact, I've been given those last two tests for 20 years. No one's ever finished. You finished both of them, and you got a perfect score on each test. Sir, wow. you are beyond genius. I can't measure it in the world of 3D space. You have a very interesting mind. I like to meet interesting minds. It's a pleasure to meet you. Great. How do I get paid? That was the first thing I'm thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So I go out. I say my goodbye to the lady at the front desk. I go sit in my car in the parking garage, and I'm about ready to call my wife on the old bricks, the big six cell phone. I'm like mm -hmm. about ready to call her, and it hit me. He just called me a genius. I went from being the second grader retard, crying every night, to being a genius in that single moment. Wow. It hit me so hard that I cried for 15, 20 minutes. And then I realized I'm not the only genius that went through all this. Every single person watching your video right now, Kyle, is a genius. Because Albert Einstein and I both agree that everyone is a genius. But if you tell a fish to climb a tree, he will live his whole life believing he is stupid. Mm -hmm. He has no business being in the tree. He's a fish. He should swim. My first book, Find Your Swim. It was my journey, my dyslexia journey. So I hope that story helps a couple of folks watching this. Oh, it should. It's, it, it's crucial to understand that somewhere there's a test that if you take it, you will kill it. I didn't know it existed. It's a couple of triangles and cubes for me. For you, it may be something else, but I honestly believe that every one of us is a genius. Every one of us has a calling. And don't give up. Don't die at age 25 and live a life of quiet desperation like Ben Franklin's famous quote. Don't do it. There's more for you out there. So... There you go, Kyle. That's, that's the origin story. Do you want me to talk about my next phase or where man, I'm at now? Or? Man, you tell you what. Go from when you, um, when you were on top the first time and then you okay. hit that, that downhill slope and then you came back up again. Okay. So I got on top fairly quickly because I have three uncles that build and I was building. I paid cash for my first house at the age of 20. Uh, that's in Morgan's Point, Texas. Um, uh, honest truth of it is, um, I had worked as a busboy at the Houston Yacht Club there in Shore Acres, and I'd saved up maybe, I think I had about three to four grand, and uh, I had a good job. I'd just gotten a job uh, at NASA as a draftsman, and so I was in a position that buying a house wasn't totally out of the possibilities, but I wanted a new Camaro um, or a new something you know new truck or something i have some money in my pocket and so i kind of got tricked my dad said hey i'm gonna go look at this house down here in morgan's point why don't you come with me I was, sure the house was sitting like this not like this it was sitting like this mm -hmm. uh, it had a flat roof on it that's really bad for rain environments like houston and uh he goes the bank wants nineteen thousand for it what do you think uh what do you think a good price is well my dad was a landlord he had lots of properties and i knew my way around real estate i just never owned it 
I said, I don't know, Dad. It's three bedroom, two bath. You'll get at least five, six hundred bucks bucks a month rent on it. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking ten thousand cash. He goes, Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you buy it, Brad? Me? Oh man, I only got like I only got like three grand. Four, I got four grand from four years of working. I tell you what, Brad, if you'll put your four grand in this, I'll give you the six grand. Oh wow. Are you kidding? That's like four years of labor for me. Four years of savings in a single decision of yes or no. What do you think I said? I said yes. And so the bank representative is a bank foreclosure. She was up at the front. We were in the back. He goes, do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? I said, I'll do it. He pulls out $10,000 in cash with a rubber band. Mm -hmm. And he goes, here you go. I said, all right. So I walk up to the lady at the front, the, the bank representative. I said, if you'll take this, I'll take the house. And I never told her how much was in it. This is part of the negotiation skills that I have. And she goes, sold, you're done. By the way, there's 10,000 there. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I just bought a house for 10,000 cash. I had no payments, no mortgage, no rent, but I had a house that sat like this. So for the next 90 days, I jacked it up myself. I have a friend from Australia who came. We built a pitched roof on it. I put about $6,000 in it. And I lived there for, um, uh, four, four years. Yeah. I lived there for four years, no rent, no mortgage. So when you do that one time in your life, you accumulate money and ideas and that kind of opportunity, let me have a little rocket ride in real estate. If right. you don't pay rent and you don't have a mortgage and everything you're making, you can put into real estate. It makes you look like, Oh, you're some kind of a real estate genius for buying property in Baytown and Laporte and all over. So the truth of the matter was I, I got fortunate on my first lightning strike. After that, it was up to my noggin to figure out what do I do next. There's not always going to be some daddy standing around saying, hey, I'll match your four years of labor. Right. That, that, that's a once in a lifetime deal. Um, and to be honest, every single person watching this has that opportunity too. They're right now, they're saying, no, that's BS. My dad would never help me. Yeah, but there's an uncle. There's a man down the street. There's your, your a high school teacher. There's somebody in your world that if you're looking at a genuine, valuable opportunity, that they're really to back you. Uh, one of the exercises I learned was you should always have an answer to this. I haven't said this in years, Kyle. You've really brought this out of me. You should always have an answer. If somebody asks you, hey, Kyle, what would you do with $100,000 right now? I got the checkbook. I'm ready to hand it to you. Well, well the so, first thing, if you... If you yeah. Don't go there. Yeah. Go there. yeah, well, if you, get, if you get past the whole party thing, uh, <laughs> or I buy a car, a Jeep, I go on a vacation, if you get past that, that answer that you give, uh, I would write the check for it. I know a ton of people that if you have the right answer, the check is readily available. Mm -hmm. And there's a show called Shark Tank. And those guys are sitting back saying, if you have the right answer to the question, I'll give you the money. There's a whole show based on that question. I've never made the connection there, but Shark Tank's based on that old exercise. What would you do if I give you $10,000 right now? And you don't know. You say, oh, I'd pay off my credit cards. That's all a survival thinking, um, minimalist thinking. So when you, start, when you start coming up with the answers that the millionaire would say, I like what you said there. Let me give you the 10000 Execute on your idea. You said you're going to buy the neighbor's truck for 4000 wash it, and clean it up, and sell it for ten. I'll split the profit with you. Holy cow, I'm in business. Or I'm going to buy this property over here, like flip a house. Or I'm going to – I got this idea for makeup, like Kylie uh, – not Kylie Jenner. But th there's just – if you have the right answer, the money is there. This is what's so ridiculous. In my case, my first one was my dad. Mm -hmm. Since then, I've got multiple partners with more. I've got guys that are worth half a billion dollars on my, on my, uh, I mean, they're just my friends. And so when I say I want to buy a certain hotel and I want to renovate it for this much money. And at the end, we're going to have this kind of a hotel. They're like, good, let's get going. I've worked my way up to it. Sometimes what would you do with a hundred dollars? Well, I'd buy a box of pencils. I'd sell each pencil for double the money. You just have to practice what, what value are you going to bring to the earth? If it's me, 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 and you're central, centric, oh, I'll pay off my bills. I'll buy me a new car. I'll go on a vacation. Oh, if I win the lottery, that's not the, that's not the right answer. And you're not going to get very far. Actually, you won't, get in, you won't go very far at all. Well, um, you know, you brought up a good point because if you're not out to help other people, you're never going to get ahead in this life. That's exactly right. Yeah, we have BS meters too. Um, you know, last time we chatted, I was talking about kind of my phase two where – Knowing what is your uh, calling, what mm -hmm. is your purpose on earth, right? And there's so many people, even at age 50, still trying to figure it out. Come on, dude, you're 50. Let's figure it out, right? 
Mm-hmm. Well, I was able to figure it out fairly quickly because these three stories or these three phrases collided right in front of my face. And there was this like little explosion. And I realized that works for everyone. And mm-hmm. the first phrase that came to me was from Carl Lagerfeld. He was a designer. I'm a designer. He's dyslexic, etc. So I was looking for somebody who's already gone through the jungle. So I don't have to figure out every little step and, and make a new path. So as I was looking for those guys that could help me on my journey, I came across these three phrases. Number one, the great get the great. And after a lot of research and, and just studying Karl Lagerfeld and the other two, the other two phrases I'll say in a minute, what, I, what he was saying was the great design creates the great fabric and the great fabric cre- gets a great seamstress and a great seamstress sews a great dress and a great dress sells to a great client and a great client gives a great referral. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm all in. I love this. This was not Karl Lagerfeld. This was me figuring out what the heck was he saying with that crazy German accent of his. So the second story brought some clarity to it. And this is from Dr. Martin Luther King. His, his little phrase is this. If, if you find yourself to be a street sweeper, sweep the streets in such a manner that the kings of this earth and the angels of heaven stop and pause and say, here lives a great street sweeper. Well, there's that word again, great, great street sweeper. I'm in, I, I, I wanna do this great thing. How do I become the great get the great? I, I wanna be this great street sweeper. Well, the trick of all of this is found in the third and final phrase that all these collided in my world all at the same time. And it's, it's, it's free, it's the word free. And King Solomon is considered one of the wisest men ever. He wrote a book just of wisdom. And if you've never read this book of wisdom, you need to go hunt it out. I knew I, I was, tired of being broke. So I went and talked to smart people via their books. If you wrote a book and you're smart, I'm pretty much going to read it at least once. Not bad for a dyslexic dude. Um, So (laughs) in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 11, and the verse is 25, it says, whoever gives a lot will succeed. It doesn't say whoever gives a lot will maybe succeed or might succeed or hopefully will succeed or could succeed. It says we'll succeed. Okay, so I have the mind of, you know, a thousand air or a 10,000 air or a hundred thousand air. King Solomon has the mind of a multi-billionaire. Mm-hmm. And he's saying this, he's dropping those kind of nuggets. So for me to say, oh, that's not right, that's not true. That's, that's arrogant that, it, okay, if I thought right, I would already be rich. If I thought right, I'd already have the perfect relationship, right? If I thought right, my kids would have already turned out fantastic. If I, so part of this is that self-examination. Okay, I'm wrong in some area, I'm missing it. King Solomon says this free thing. So let's take that little wisdom and go back to Dr. Martin Luther King. How do you become a great street sweeper, Kyle Yates, boom, boom, pants? Please tell us. Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. I will tell you, you do it on your own desire because if you're good at it, you want to do it better. So to become the great street sweeper, you buy the books and you read them. You go to the seminars, and in the seminar, you're on the front row taking the notes. You're watching the YouTube videos of other great street sweepers, right? You're actually traveling to the other city just to meet with that great street sweeper. You're coming back, and at 2 in the morning when no one's on the street, you're there with a toothbrush. You're keeping your broom perfectly clean. You're keeping your sharp axe, your axe sharp, just let's say. Um, You're doing all of this, and who's paying you? No No one. You're doing all that for free. You're taking night courses at community college. You're doing all this for free. And then one day, the king stops and says, my name is Tillman Fertitta. I like the way you design. I need to hire you for your creativity. That's exactly how it happened. I think the phrase was, I need your vision. That's what he told me. That's what he told us. So, but I learned all the stuff you, you know I know. The, the people watching don't know. The 3D animations, the flash animations, the, the perspective, yes. the golden mean, the 21 different senses, all the balance, all the stuff that I've mastered that has now shown up as I'm a great street sweeper. And so back to that King Solomon guy, he's got another phrase in there I like. You really ought to read it. It's good w- chunks of wisdom. Um, he has this one. Do you see some man skilled in his labor? He will work for kings and not the common man. Boom! Ole, ole. That's a that's a victory <laughs> slide into the goalie corner in a in a in a soccer game right there, baby. Do you see a man skilled in his labor? He will work for kings and not the common man. Dude, I work for the top of the top, the billionaires. I mean, one high profile one, but I've got several that are not, and they don't want to be high profile. They just 
it's just like Brad, you got vision, you got creativity. I don't know how you got it. Well, at two o'clock in the morning, I was outside scrubbing the street. I was keeping my broom clean. I was learning how to become great in my skill. Um, and I say all that because the Marie Calendar pie is so delicious. If you've ever had a Marie Calendar pie, yeah, I'm swerving conversations here. But he saved a little restaurant. The restaurant was going out of business. She was a homeless single mom and she was a waitress. And if the, if the deli closed, she was, she wouldn't have any income. And she out of desperation went home and she had a really good pie recipe. And so she baked a pie, took it to the owner of the deli and says, look, can we try to sell some of my pieces of my pie? And they sold out that day. So she went home and made two. And then by the end of the week, people were saying, Hey, can I take the whole pie? By the end of the week, she was selling four pies. It didn't take long for her to get a commercial oven in her apartment so she could just bake pies. He closed the deli just to focus on pies. There's Marie Calendar pies in every freezer section in every grocery store. If your calling is to bake pies, bake your pies in a manner that awards are given and the kings of this earth and the angels of heaven stop and pause and say, okay, this is a dang good pie. Sorry, I just threw, threw Martin Luther King in there. But I learned all that from Steve Harvey. I learned all that from T.D. Jakes. I learned that from other smart dudes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's probably the biggest thing. Number one, admit that you don't see things correctly, that you are wrong. That's harsh. You're wrong. If you were, if you were right, you'd be rich. Quit arguing with your uncle, your aunt, your dad, your coworkers. Dude, you're just wrong. So now you've come to that realization. Go and study what's right. That lines up with you. You're not dyslexic like me. You're a super smart bookworm. Go find out what other smart bookworms did for success. You can't exactly repeat it, but they're going to leave clues, right? So, you know, I find out I'm a genius. I come across this free thing. And I was like, well, I still am not great. That doesn't just make you great. But I know to give is a big part of success. Free. Doing things for free. And do it to a level that's free and our built-in BS meter does not go off. Meaning if I do like a real world example, you meet me on thumbtack.com and you hit me up and it's like, hey, I want to build my dream home. Would you know that's how our first contact. Well, I'll send them a quick email. Hey, it sounds interesting. Have you got a sketch of what you want to uh, build? Take a picture of your sketch and uh, email it to me. I'll cat it up. Uh, that means draft it on the computer for free. No strings attached, never call me again, no big deal. They'll send it to me, I'll cat it up, I'll send it to them. And I don't really care if they call me back and engage me as an architect or not. And because of that level, I get almost every single job because I'm bringing real value. If I were to die, they have a drawing of their dream. They're one step closer to their dream home being built. They needed to go from the grid paper on the kitchen table to something in CAD. And now they can go either hire me or somebody else I was just giving of my skill set and you know my time. It doesn't take that much for me to do that. So I've mastered that trade. For some people, it may take two hours. For me, I, I can do something like that in 20, 30 minutes. And that's where I actually had this explosion now in success. Um, so that's, that took a long time to figure out how do I give something free that makes sense. Don't give a free Starbucks card. Don't give a hat with the logo. Don't give a koozie. That's all BS meter stuff is just going off. Oh, this is BS. This is a salesman. Find something real. If, you're, if you paint houses, be offering to paint an entire room for free, no strings attached, and leave. Jaws dropped. Your reputation goes through the roof. The next 10 people that that homeowner talks to is like, you're not going to believe this guy. We hired this painter because he painted our house for free. A week later, we call him back. He was $500 more than everybody else. But oh my gosh, he did it for free. Well, that's Instagram, Snapchat. That's the world of success. Mm -hmm. You see what happened? Yeah, the room probably cost the expert painter, I don't know, maybe 500 bucks. But what else are you going to do on this Saturday afternoon? You ain't got no business, bro. You're sitting there like the best lawyer ever who won't advertise. He may be the best lawyer ever, but he's not willing to advertise. He's going to die broke. It's like the very best NFL football player, the best one, doesn't even go to tryouts. What's up with that? Well, I'm so good they should just find me sitting here in my living room. Mm -hmm. No, when you put something in the world for free, you can't plant an apple seed and get a, uh, a pear. It's impossible. It's impossible to plant an apple seed and get a giraffe. Whatever you put in the world, it's going to return it. This is the soil. This is dirt. That's how it works. So if you're putting value into the earth, it's going to come back to you. 
So if I plant an apple seed, it's going to grow, it's going to return an apple, but does it return one apple? Does it return 100 apples on a tree? It's always in abundance to whatever you planted. So I draw a little sketch for you, and it's your house, or we paint a room, or whatever it is, real value. It's going to come back in multitudes, and it has happened now. I'm on my fifth generation of feeling this. So I'm, I'm entering the world of the higher income earners, uh, you know, top five, 10% of earners in my world. Um, that's because it's been six times generations. Like I helped the lady, she told her friend, I did the same thing for her friend. Well, this friend refused to do it. I'll just pay you right now because your reputation is rock star. I'm sorry, but I'm too busy. I'll pay you 10% more. Uh, you know, I go scooby do on them, right? I go scooby do when somebody starts saying, okay, there's an honest deal. I won't go into all the details, but we're buying a property for 4 million. It's gonna be about a, uh, I don't know, $5 million renovation. I brought a vision to the property and they've partnered me in. I don't have any money in the deal, but I have a vision in the deal. I have a, I have a like, like, like uh, Tillman Fertitta says, I want your vision or I need your vision. The same thing with these guys. They want my vision. You remember when I said, if you can say, what would you do with a million dollars and you have the right answer, somebody will write the check. No question. What would you do with $10 million? Do you have a good answer? It's called venture capitalist. It's called your, your mother-in-law who knows you're really successful at woodworking. It's, it's just having that right answer. So work on that, number one. So this actual deal is a real freaking deal. I'm partnered in. When it's all said and done, it's a $31 million property when it's up and running. And I own a serious slice of it. I, dude, it's more than seven figures. My percentage is more than a million bucks. I have no mm. money in this deal. So let's talk about that. What do we have? We have to always have these two things. We have time and we have, we have two resources. You got time, time you got and money. money. Mm -hmm. That's what we all have, the same two resources. Let's slide this one over, and here's a magical resource called vision, right? In that mm -hmm. same book I was talking about, the, the book with lots of wisdom in it, it says a, a people perish for a lack of vision, right? A right. people perish because they don't have a dream. They don't have a vision. So I bring a vision to a property, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we could remodel it this way and make – you know, $2 million. But if we remodel it like what Brad wants to do, I mean, that's my skill set. We'll make $8 million. Does it hurt us to give him a little slice of the action? Oh my gosh, no. And we don't want to lose him. We don't want to hire another architect. We want that guy on the team. We want him to pilot this all the way through. It's not the only deal I got like that. That is my, that is my highest record though, a seven figure paycheck. Yeah. Um, that's my highest. And I don't get it like on the first day I I'm on the team. So for the next four years of renovation, it'll take a year or two, and then we'll operate it once it hits 80% occupancy. Um, it's going to be a good deal. So I'm very, very honored, very happy, and they offered me a commission. I said, can we cut you a $300,000 check or whatever? I'm like, I'd rather be a partner. I'd love to tell everybody I'm a partner with you guys. You guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. That's Likewise, likewise. That was the actual word my partner told me. He goes, likewise, I want to tell everybody I've partnered with you on this deal. And so, so that's kind of karma. You know, treat people right, comes back oh, yeah. around. And, and, and get you I'm a big believer but in karma it, it, there's no doubt i mean you don't plant an apple and get something else you're going it's going to come back around to an apple you know one of my favorite i'm talking about the apple so much but this this apple right here i'll pick up an apple i should have had one on your on your that would have been cool i could cut it in half i didn't know where our conversation was going to go <laughs> but i cut the apple in half and i hold it up to the camera right mm -hmm. look, at that. look what i'm doing to the camera uh so it has an apple and I ask everybody's viewing this right now in all the different social networks, what do you see? And some of them are going to say, oh, I see the seeds. Some are going to say, oh, I see the fruit. Some of them are going to say, I see half an apple, right? Some of them say, I see a snack. Yeah. Um, but when you see the orchard, you will understand success. Yes. A very good analogy, Hear that? actually. Mm -hmm. When you see the orchard in a seed, you'll understand success. So I deal with new architectural clients all the time and one of my lines with them is I, i'll tell them i say you got a great project here it's going to be several thousand dollars in architectural fees whatever but uh i'm not really that interested in a couple thousand bucks that's that's not what i'm interested in what i really want is five years from now when somebody says do you know a good architect or a good designer brad brad call brad brad's amazing mm -hmm. i want my reputation more than i want your money and so what I'm, I'm i'm willing to do right now is give you a good price on this you know that's just a bite of an apple but i want to help you create an orchard. I actually use that in my, my, my conversations because it makes a clear picture of where I want to go. 
And right. if I was full of it, like my initials are BS, if I was full of it, the BS <laughs> meter would go off and I wouldn't be successful. I wouldn't be anywhere. So right. that is about all I got time for. I'm getting flagged down by the powers that be. So oh, I hear you. Well, let's I was wrap gonna... this up. Do you did we get it all out that you want or do we do it again another episode? What are we going to do, Kyle? You know, honestly, I was going to ask you if you wouldn't mind coming on again because you've got so much wisdom and I think you could be such a help to so many of us that. Um... Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. I, it took you like six weeks to get me on, dude. And I am super mega busy. If you get, I don't know, what, what do you normally get on views? Uh, 600 views? or If you, if you get 1,000 views on this, I'll definitely do another. I'll do a follow-up. And, and then look, look for some of the questions in the comments and see what we can do, what we can really bring. Because um, the biggest deal for me is just to bring the value. Um, I, I would do another episode. But, yeah, yeah, if this one is interesting to anybody. Well, I just want to say thank you because yeah, you've taken time out of your day. And I mean, it's been one thing after another, just to, just to get to this point because you're yeah. always busy and, and, um, uh, most understandably. So, yeah, yeah. you know, if, if we can get you back on here, man, that'd be awesome. Let's see what happens. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm open to it. I'd like to see you get a spike in I just want to, I'm competitive. I want to be your best guest. Let me, maybe I need to go shoot, you know, I'll go shoot somebody. Um, but really hats off to you for doing the smack in the middle of the coronavirus. Uh, you're, you're out here doing it. And I hope because of the coronavirus, people find a hope in this conversation. Like I've had my biggest week of uh, pretty much the last, oh, I can't even honestly say because it's just so, it sounds like I'm bragging. But in the middle of this, I'm brought on building partners, people who want to build my designs. I've brought on uh, investors out of nowhere, dude. They're like, hey, can we invest with you in what you want to do next? And uh, this week has been extraordinary. In fact, I, I, we couldn't even get this started because I got two calls from two <laughs> different people. And with that, I'll shout out Juan. Juan, I have to shout that out because I told him I was getting ready to come do this. And uh, so, yeah, that's it, dude. Let's uh, see what happens. I'll be happy to come back. Well, let me say this before you go. You know, okay. when I, I met you 20 some odd years ago, in, in an English class, because I decided I was going to go back to school and try to make something out of my life. And, I hate and <laughs> But because you got up and you introduced yourself and you were interested in my artwork, it, and you gave me a vision and I stuck by your side and I'm... I'm starting to get to where I really want to be. And I mean, it, it took me getting some kicks in the pants to, to really listen, but right. I believed in what you were telling me and I believe yeah. it a lot more now because I'm seeing that success come to fruition. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. you and I are both kind of older than the millennials and all that. And they think it's instant and quick. And I oh, didn't want to be, I didn't want to be the late bloomer. I mean, I hit such high level at, in my 20s. I was on top of the world, racing cars, traveling the world, you know, because um, of real estate. And then I crashed bad, really bad. Maybe we'll talk about that next time. How do you overcome a crash? Oh, but yeah. um, I didn't want to be a Ray Kroc old fart success story. I didn't want to be Colonel Sanders. I don't want to be the old fart success story. But this is where I'm at. So I'm probably the new poster child for uh, late, late in life success. I'm not that late, mm -hmm. but I feel like it is. Well, and your success is just beginning, my friend. I mean, yeah. look how long it took me before I found something that I was really passionate about and really loved, yeah. and, and, and yeah. now I'm doing it. Yeah, it's all good stuff. All right, so, dude, we got to say goodbye, man. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Yeah. You hope, got it. Hope to talk to you soon. Sure. Thanks, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast.